Let's begin. We are on Daf Chaf Vav Amud Aleph, if you're following in the art scroll on page 26A3. We've backed up just a little bit um, in order to be able to hit this in flow. Okay, so if you take a look, we were talking about the, the, the people of the Ma'amad. So let's just go back and explain what that means. There are korbanot that are brought, they're supposed to be brought by all of Am Yisrael. Et korbani lachmi leishai. Right, takrivu. You have, you have to plural, have to bring this korban. So it's the korban of the Jewish people, and if it's the korban of the Jewish people, then all the people have to be involved in the bringing of it. So normally, when you bring a korban, you're standing there with the korban as you bring it. You do smicha. The person's right there. So what do we do if we have a korban that belongs to all the Jewish people? So the answer to that is that what we do is we create a artificial ma'amad. Uh, to stand by the korban of the community, okay? So how do we do that? So let's take a look. What we do is you have the koanim and the levim that are divided into 24 different mishmarot. And then what we do is we divide also the Jewish people into 24 mishmarot. Some of the Jewish people live in Israel and they attend in person. Some of the Jewish people live afar and they don't attend in person. But the idea is that on the day that they're supposed to do it, so we talked about the fasting, and we talked as well, not only about the fasting, but also about the reading that they would do in the Torah on their days. Each day there would be another reading, uh, a larger portion and a smaller portion. Um, they would divide the portions into the reading of the Torah. The larger portion would be divided into two so that each person could have at least three pesukim when they go up to the Torah. And the smaller portion would be read by the third person. So that way you'd have, in, within these two pieces, you'd be able to read uh, that way. Then... Uh, the Mishnah told us about the fact that there's, during Mincha, that it's read by heart. Now we t- go back and we say that there's certain exceptions. Kol yom shish bo halel, any day that has halel, in ma'amad b'shaharit. You don't do the ma'amad, you don't do the reading of these portions of the Torah in shaharit. Why? Because they're busy with the halel. Korban musaf in bene ilah. If you bring korban musaf, if there's a day where you have musaf and you're bringing the korban of the musaf, really, by the way, that is what the musaf is. The musaf that we pray is... Um, is in lieu of the fact that we used to bring a korban musaf. And that's why we say, in all of the musafs, no matter which musaf you're talking about, we talk about the musaf korban that they used to bring, uh, right, uh, 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 at that time. So korban musaf in min'ilah. They would cancel the ma'amad from mincha and including ni'ilah. So both mincha and ni'ilah would be canceled on a day where there was a korban musaf because they'd be busy with that. Okay, korban etzim, on the other hand, if there was a korban etzim, a korban, a sacrifice of wood, we'll see exactly what that means, and b'mincha, so then you don't do the ma'amad, the reading of the Torah portions, uh, b'mincha, however, the inference is, but you would do it during, during the ne'ilah. Divrei Rabbi Akiva, these are the words of Rabbi Akiva. Amalo ben Azai, ben Azai said, he explained to him, no, wait one second, Rabbi Yoshua used to teach differently. Korban Musaf and Bimincha. By a Korban Musaf, we don't do it for Mincha. But by the time we hit Neila, you're already back in stride. You don't have to worry about it. So we're good to go. Okay? So Korban Musaf and Bimincha. Korban Etzim. When it came to Korban Etzim, the, the wood sacrifice in Bimincha, they would not do it during Neila, but they would do it during, um, they would do it during uh, Mincha. <coughs> I thought you said they don't do it during Mincha and during Ne'ilah. That was the opinion before, okay? But now in the opinion of Rabbi Yoshua, that Ben Azai was coming to Rabbi Akiva and saying to him that Rabbi Yoshua taught differently, now it doesn't work that way, okay? Now we're saying only Ne'ilah. And we'll come back and understand, well, why are you still doing Ma'amad of Mincha uh, when it comes to Korban uh, Etzim? Chazar Rabbi Akiva liot shorek ben Azai. Rabbi Akiva reverted from his opinion, and he started now holding like ben Azai in the name of Rabbi Yoshua. Now we go back to this concept of this korban of the wood. This is where we left off last time. What is this korban of the wood? Zeman etze atze keuna ve'aam tisha. There are uh, nine times throughout the year where we have the korban uh, atze. Uh, I'd say Kohanim. So the, the, that we're going to celebrate this wood festival uh, with the Kohanim and the people. Okay? And now we're going to give you the dates of each of these nine times. Be'echad ben Nisan. Pay attention to the dates, guys. Be'echad ben Nisan. On the first day of Nisan, B'nei Arach ben Yehuda. On the, the, the sons of Arach, the son of Yehuda. From the tribe of uh, Yehuda. That's when they donated the wood. What does it mean they donated the wood? 
when they came up to the temple, they didn't have enough wood to be able to, do, to, uh, to bring the korbanot. So you had families that stepped up and they gave the wood. So this family, the, the people of family of Arach, this tribe of Yehuda, they gave on the Echad Benisan. The next one, which was when they ran out of wood again, was Be'esrim B'Tamuz, on the 20th day of Tammuz, B'nei David ben Yehuda, from the families of David, from the tribe of Yehuda. Now let's pay attention. Echad ben Nisan, until Esrim B'Tamuz. How long is that? Long time. Nisan, Iyar, Sivan, Tammuz. Okay? So that's a long time. From the beginning of Nisan until the 20th of, of Tammuz, you're talking four months. Okay? He gave enough wood to be able to sustain the Bet HaMikdash with all its korbanot, okay? Because they need wood for everything. Oh. For four months, okay? Then what happened? On the 20th day of Tammuz uh, comes the family of David ben Yehuda. How long did the wood last until they needed to get another donation from another family? Bechamisha be'av. So from the 20th of Tammuz, what comes? Tammuz av. That's 15 days, right? Bechamisha be'av b'nei Parosh ben Yehuda. The family of Parosh ben Yehuda, they came and they donated on the 5th of av. Bishiv'abo b'nei Yonadav ben Rechav. On the seventh day of Av, how long did their donation last? From the fifth of Av to the seventh of Av, two days they gave. On the seventh of Av, Yonadav, the son of Rechav. Pe'asarabo, how far do we go? Three days. B'nei Sina'a ben Benyamin. Okay, from the tribe of Benyamin. Be'chamisha asarbo, five days. B'nei Zatu ben Yehuda, the sons of Zatu from Mishpachat Yehuda, from the tribe of Yehuda. Ve'imahem, ko'anim ve'levi'im, and on that day, all of the Kohanim and all of the Leviim, and not only the Kohanim and Leviim, call me Shifto. Let's say someone knew that they came, they were one of these families, they forgot which one, which family they were part of. They didn't know. They, their grandfather told them, you know, we used to celebrate the, the wood festival. So he's not sure which day uh, was his family's. So what does he do? They all glam on to the day of Zatu uh, uh, Ben Yehuda. Okay? Who else would come on that day and celebrate this day? the day of Chamisha Asar, on the 15th day of Av. Remember, what day is that? Tu Be'av. Right. We all know Tu Be'av as a day, uh, a, a day of celebration, a day of happiness. That's the day we'll see later on. All of the Shiduchim is Tu Be'av. Okay, so we'll come back to that concept uh, um, uh, in a little while. But um, you have on this day, everyone comes, not only them, but also, uh, aside from the people who didn't know the default day, also the people who were gonve eli. What does that mean? That they uh, they were gonve eli. They would smuggle uh, a, 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 what's called a pestle. Now you might know that if you're a a fan of margaritas. There he is. Did you just do that? There you go. The guy who takes. You ever yeah. see the bowl? So you have that thing where you, where you that tool is a handheld pestle. Okay. However, right? So what's it called? You have the thing that crushes the item beneath it. So it's just a blunt, heavy object. Anyway, so these people, they would smuggle uh, an eli, a, 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 a pestle. And we'll see exactly what that means in just a minute, right? And not only them, but also Ubne and the people who were kotzeketziot, that they would cut the figs. So these two families, these two people, uh, the descendants of those people would also um, would also come and celebrate on that day, on the 15th day of Av. Be'esrimbo, on the 20th day of Av, B'nei Fahat Moav ben Yehuda. The 20th day was the family of Fahat Moav, from, that was his name, the tribe of Yehuda. And they would celebrate on the 20th. So the, how long was that? 15 days. Sorry, five days again. Now, the last family... Sorry, Be'esrim Be'elul B'nei Adin Ben Yehuda. How long is that? From the 20th of Elul, from the 20th till the 20th, a full month. So they donated a month worth of wood. And the final one, Be'echad Be'tevet Shebo B'nei Parosh, Ba'u, Shavu B'nei Parosh, Shini'ah, on the first day of Tevet, which means from 20th of Elul. How long is that? You have Elul, you have Tishrei, you have Cheshvan, you have Kislev, you have Tevet. So the family of this of this parosh goes from Esrim the, the donation sorry of Adin of Adin the tribe of uh, uh, of Yehuda until from Esrim Be'elul until Echad Be'Tevet they gave a massive donation of nearly five months and finally Be'Echad Be'Tevet Shavu they returned Bnei Parosh they donated wood 
Again, so you have this family that we already read about. They were the number three people in the list of people from the beginning. Okay, or number two, right? So they came back and they gave another filler donation to be able to, uh, to what's it called, to get us back. Now, it once... It say until the first of Nisan. Sorry? It doesn't say they gave until the first of Nisan, which would close the circle, right? It doesn't say that. No, no. no. Now, so what happened? How come uh, this happened again, right? Until the first of Nisan. How come it fell back on, on these people? Again, it would be from then until the end, Right? How come it fell back on them? Because these are the families that could, and uh, they were. It, it came. They 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 had a a goral to see who would have to do it, and they kind of came up with the with the lot uh, uh, again. So each one of these days was a day of celebration where they would come up to the Beit Hamikdash and they would bring a korban of wood. Not only would they bring the korbanot of the day, they would take wood separately and burn it on the mizbeach as a sign of thanks, but also as a sign of uh, celebration and uh, of the family's generosity and that was forever. So because they helped out the Beit HaMikdash when it needed the most, these days were canonized for those families and they were like a mini Yom Tov, they wouldn't do Tahanun, they had Yehishem, etc, etc, because of the donation that they gave. On the first day of Tevet, there was no Ma'amad, Shaya Bo. Halil the korban musaf the korban etzim because on that day they had uh, all of the things that we mentioned earlier that get rid of a ma'amad. What did we have on that day? We had halil and you have a korban musaf and you have korban etzim. So all three of the reasons would combine together. Halil gets rid of shahar of uh, of uh, what's it called of ma'amad in musaf as we started. Remember, remember that. Right, we started right in the beginning. Any day you have Halel in Ma'amad Shacharit. So Halel means there's no Ma'amad Shacharit. Korban Musaf and Korban means that there's no, no Ma'amad by Musaf and by, uh, and by Mincha. And then finally you have the, what's it called? And finally you have, uh, when there's a wood offering, then we say that there's no Ma'amad by, by Ne'ilah. So you had three different things combining to uh, eliminate any Ma'amad service on that day of Echad Betevet. Okay. What's a Musaf offering? The Musaf offering is is one of the things that we that we the korbanah they would bring on the Musaf. So how come this doesn't also apply to the first of uh, Rosh Chodesh Nisan? What do you mean? It says on the first day of Teves there was no Ma'amad services at all, right? So isn't isn't there halal on Rosh Chodesh Nisan? Okay. Yes. And there's a wood offering. Yeah, but there would still be Ma'amad on that day. Because you, you, you didn't have, if you didn't have one of the things, then that would be enough to have something. Okay, but on this day you had all three things. And in the other day you don't have all three. Okay? Yeah, but how is it that they donated just enough wood to last that specific time? What do you mean? They donated exactly the amount of wood that would last. They paid to have wood brought. Paid. Yeah, and... and well, they, they, again, they, arrange, they paid for and arranged to have the wood brought. So it might have been from their personal stash or it might have been from somewhere else. But they were basically filling a need uh, based on how much the Beit HaMikdash needed. Okay? Why is it all from the tribe of Yehuda? Sorry? Why is it all from the tribe of Yehuda, of all the donors? Not all of them. We had uh, one that was from the tribe of Benjamin, right? Oh, the, one, yes. You saw that, right? In the middle, Sena. So, so they, I'm sorry. Yeah. Now, there's a distinguishing factor, and that's important to understand. We started off by saying this idea that on a fast day, right, um, there's certain uh, things which, ha- which happen on a fast day. If you look in the beginning yeah. right, of the Mishnah. But we distinguished, if you remember, here, look here. Yeah. Bitaniyot, ma'amadot, biyom kipurim. Bitaniyot, we said, doesn't refer to the ta'aniyot that are set in the calendar. It referred to ta'aniyot that they set up as specific ad hoc ta'aniyot for tragedies. So the same thing is also true with the halal that's mentioned. It's not any day that has halal that cancels a ma'amad. So that's the answer also to why the halal of Rosh Chodesh Nisan doesn't cancel the ma'amad on that day. Okay? These mini festivals, they also they had halal? So it would depend. Not, not every one of them had halal. Right, but on this particular occasion, the first one he asked, yeah. which is Echad Nisan, had Halel, but it didn't have the kind of Halel that uh, canceled 
that canceled what's it called? Ma'amad. That, that canceled the Ma'amad. But why were the Ma'amad services canceled? The, they wanted the people. We've seen already that the Ma'amad service is like something that we would do, but we would cancel it if there was something else important that we wanted you to be focused on. So One example do we have of that? Yeah, good. We have Fridays where they didn't do Ma'amad. Why? We want you going home prepare for Shabbat. Right, right, right. You know, when you're sitting here in the shul, reading the Torah portions, it's a wonderful thing when, when it doesn't interfere with something else. But if we have a halal, which is a chiyuv, and we're not, we don't want you to be focused on the ma'amad, when you have the halal, so we'd rather you do the halal. When you have a korban musaf, we'd rather you focus on the korban musaf. You have a korban etzim, we'd rather you focus on the korban etzim. Okay? But on something which was halal of Rosh Chodesh, so there we didn't cancel the ma'amad for the halal of Rosh Chodesh. Okay? Let's carry on. Chamisha devarim, five things it says. <clears throat> Okay, so we've already started to talk about Ta'aniyot, so therefore we're going to carry on, like we said many times, the Gemara moves from one subject that gets mentioned to another subject that is subject adjacent. On the fifth, five things happened, on the seventh, 17th day of Tammuz, uh, and also five on Tishabav. What happened on Shiva Asab Tammuz? The Gemara says, the Mishnah says, Nishtaberu aluchot. The luchot were broken. What does it mean that they were broken? Moshe broke them. Yeah. Doesn't mean like someone was playing tennis, <laughs> where, you know, in the, in the living room, okay? Ubatel atamid. And the tamid was discontinued. What does it mean that, we, that was batel? We'll see. At the time, the, the, they didn't have the korban and they were paying the Romans to give them the korban tamid from over the walls during the siege in order to bring the korban. And finally a day came where the Romans said, nah, no more. They put the money basket full of gold over the wind, over the wall, like they always did, expecting them to bring them back. And they raised it up. And what did they put inside instead of the, 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 the sheep? They put, they put a pig. Yeah. So therefore they had no korban. Ubatel tamid The tamid became uh, batel. The huv ha'ir. The city wall was breached. That means they were working to destroy, to build, break their way in to Yerushalayim after or during the siege. And they finally managed to make a hole in the wall to come into the city of Yerushalayim. Hufke'ah ha'ir on the Shiva Asabi Tammuz. V'saraf apostamos et ha-Torah. Apostamos burnt the Torah in public. And we'll see again uh, uh, what this means. He was a powerful person at the time uh, from the Greek army. And at the time, uh, he, he, he didn't just burn a regular Sefer Torah, he burnt one of the Torahs that was held in the Beit HaMikdash, so it was seen as a, as a tremendous, as a tremendous uh, tragedy. Now, what we have today, which match, matched Apostamos and Sefer Torah, is the Codex. A, a loss of the Codex of our, the Ket Aram Soba would be an immeasurable loss. Not just like you burned the Sefer Torah. Why? Because how do we write Sefer Torah now? We do it by checking against the authoritative version, which was the Codex. So destroying the Codex would be destroying the accuracy of all future Torahs. Okay? The Sefer Torah that Apostamos burnt was the one that they would copy from. Is it from Ezra HaSofer? Yes. So at that point, destroying that Sefer Torah was considered to be a, a, huge, a, a huge problem. Okay? Now, um, And not only that, after they conquered, they, aside from just destroying, they also turned the holiest place into a place of idol worship by putting a tselem, a, an idol worship in the middle of the Hechal, the middle of the Kodesh of the Beit HaMikdash. But on the fifth, on the Tshabav, we also had five things. Right? We, there was a Gezerah on the Jewish people that they should not be able to get into Eretz Israel. That's the day when the Jewish people were crying after the return of the spies. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu said to them, you're crying now? I'll, for no reason, I'm going to give you a reason to cry. That day was the Gezerah, and you're not getting into the land of Israel. Uh, everyone that's alive between the ages of 20 and 60 is going to die. And benechem, yasher yavo acharechem, the children that will come after you, they're going to be the ones that are going to be given the ability to enter into the land uh, of Eretz Israel. So the gezerah happens on Tisha B'Av. The second thing is vechara vecharev habayit arishona ubashiniya. The first and second Beit Hamikdash was destroyed. We'll see exactly what that means later. Venil Keda Betar, and the city of Betar was conquered. It was the biggest epicenter of gathering of Jews was in, when, was in the destruction of Betar. Um, and we'll see again how terrible 
an event that was soon. Menech Resha Ha'ir, and they plowed over the city of Yerushalayim. They took, so to speak, they went to Yerushalayim, and not only did they have the things destroyed where you could easily rebuild, but they uprooted everything to the point where they were able to plow, plow it under and turn it into like a mound of earth. So that was the destruction was complete on that day. So therefore, because of that, therefore, when Av comes in, we diminish uh, the simcha that a person has. And we'll see what this means. It's not just a line. You diminish your joy. There's actually halachic ramifications to that concept. Yes. Thus, we don't make weddings and things, parties, for nine days of Av. Correct. So why do we do the three-week item? What, what do you mean? There's, we'll, we'll see exactly. We had that. That was a creation of, you know. Incorrect, but we'll, let's deal with it when we get to it. Okay, let's do that. Okay. Let's <laughs> talk about it. No problem. I'm happy to talk about it for Our you, for him. Weddings from the 17th of Tammuz until the 1st of Av. Yes. So you know when this... <laughs> Yeah, I love when people tell me there's no source Mars, and it's an actual pasuk. Mars, look, therefore, when the month of Av begins, we curtail our joy. That's why I'm making the point. No, the, the month, month of Av is nine days before. It's nine days. It's, it's not, not the three oh, weeks. It's not the three yeah. weeks. It's only yeah. nine days. Yeah. So I love when people ask this question, and especially when they say there's no you, source. Because it's an actual went pasuk. This on I, I didn't say there's no source. People say, you said, you said it was made up. You just said. We're gonna, no, let's go back to the video. To, you said you said we used to do it with just the nine. It's days a new creation. Made, you said it was a new creation. It was not a new creation. <laughs> Pasuk. In our community, I got you, but in our community, okay, we never did the three week thing until. That doesn't mean that it's not. Yeah, that's yeah. a creation. Where's the pasuk? Where's the pasuk? Your pasuk is actually in Echa. In Echa, it talks about how they descended to destroy, and when did they des- descend to destroy? Ben Hamitzarim. Between the straits. When is this time of Ben HaMitzarim between the two things? It's describing the two tragedy, the days, the two tragic days, which is Shabbat Sabbat Tammuz and Tisha B'Av. Now you're absolutely right, because the Mishnah says from the, ninth of, from the beginning of Av until the nine days, so Mema'atim B'Simcha. Now it's important to understand, Mema'atim B'Simcha is not the same as Nohega Velut. Right, so one is you're curtailing simcha, and the other one is you have to mourn. Mourn. So curtailing simcha means I can't do things that are joyous. Right. right? So what's included in something which brings joy? Wedding. Wine. Meat. Meat. Yeah. Wine. All oh, right. So we as Syrians, Sephardim, we only really have all these things, the Shavuah Shechalbo. People, like, people tell you, Shavuah Shechalbo, what are you talking about, Rabbi, making things up from Rosh Chodesh? Shavuah Shechalbo, I always explain. Shavuah Shechalbo is when we engage in Avelut. And Avelut doesn't only mean meat and wine, it means lots of other things which are Avelut. But before the Shavuah Shechalbo, all it says is you don't do joyous things. It doesn't say that you have to be Avelut. So the idea of not, of not uh, uh, showering or not swimming or not having laundry. I don't know. I don't come back after laundry comes and, hey, laundry. I don't do that. Even though every laundry commercial, the guy has a clean shirt. He's like, ah. You see like pure joy in the guy's face because someone did laundry. That's only in advertisements. There's no simcha associated with laundry. It's just a matter of Avelut. So therefore, on Shavuah Shechalbo, the week of, we have Avelut. But before that, we have things which are connected to simcha. So therefore, the concept of marriages, which are associated with simcha, halachically are forbidden from that point until that point. Why? Because mematim b'simcha. However, what happens before that point? What happens before Tisha B'Av? From the three weeks until Tisha B'Av. What is the status of that time? So it's not Avelut, it's also not Mi'ut Simcha. And if it is, and it's the same, then the Gemara is leading you astray because the Gemara is telling you that that period starts now. So the idea is that from the beginning of the three weeks, we have a smaller version of the nine days. How much is in that version? Now that's already a Machloket. Got it? So So there's a lay... 
Not a small not a thousand person wedding. <laughs> small, small steak. You just get the you, you get the medallion one, right? So <laughs> the <laughs> just yo, you go tapas. <laughs> wedding in the Middle East, no alcohol. <laughs> exactly, you get the wedding in Qatar. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so the crazy thing, the crazy thing is that at that point, now there's already a question as to how a person exhibits this feeling that's described in the pasuk. That this is a time when we were attacked by Ben Amitzarim. So, what did your father do in Halab? I don't know. I wasn't alive. You could ask him. You ever ask him about the three week thing? Um, no, I never asked him. I asked him what we do, so he tells me what we do, <laughs> and then and then that's How all I do. How long ago was there a shift in the community? Here's the, here's the problem. Can I tell you the problem? Yeah, I just want to know. I tell you the problem. Doesn't make it right. There's Many some... people think that what we once did. Is right, is right. right yeah. because we once did it. Right. I agree with that. That's, can I give you my favorite example? My father once comes and he's teaching the laws about Chalav Yisrael. Some guy stands up, he goes, The rabbis always they bring all these things. Chalav Yisrael, ridiculous. Chalav, we did not have Chalav Yisrael. It did not exist. They made it up. My grandfather used to milk the cow himself. Was and I'm nice? like, What a <laughs> muppet. <laughs> That's what Chalav Yisrael is. Yeah? So sometimes. The, the fact that we didn't do it, you did do it, you just did it like this, or you didn't realize that that's what you're doing, or that people just weren't understand, they didn't know, or they weren't as religious, or, 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 or. Sometimes the, uh, the fact that people did something once it actually creates a, a, a precedent in halakha, but not always. Well, that's to start with the baseline of it being halakhically love- correct. Yes. I asked once an old, uh, uh, an old uh, Halabi rabbi from, from South America. I said, you know, I always hear the Halabi, they always tell me, back in Halab, we didn't do this, we didn't do this. He goes, they didn't do this. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the knockout punch. I was right. like, oh, okay. All right. Sorry. He's like, we did. He's, my father was a rabbi, my grandfather was a rabbi. Of course we did it. Yeah. So sometimes it's a, there's a lack of you know, a lack of understanding. And, and, and I, I think it comes from the fact that because there have been things that were introduced to the community which may not necessarily be Syrian, yeah. right? They might be Ashkenaz influenced, but they also might be Chacham Ovadia influenced, right? So once that happens, the people are on the lookout and then they think, oh, if we didn't do it before, this was introduced now and new. Not necessarily the case. Sometimes yes, sometimes not, okay? Getting married during the three weeks is something that we used to do. And you cannot tell me that there's a, ra- a proof in halakha that, that forbids it. Chamovavya says better not to, but even he says that in certain cases, person's getting married the first time, like he, he, he does not. But for us in the community, that's like become a thing. And people think it's the same level of, 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 uh, of, not, of during, during the month of Av. Right, so it's important, again, to have an understanding about how these halakha work, and always a person should consult a competent Look, halachic <laughs> authority. Yes? Okay. Liberal Sorry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's, let's continue. All right. Now the Mishnah is going to explain exactly what is and is not involved in the preceding, uh, in the preceding statement. Shabbat shechal tisha av liyot betocha. The week that Tisha B'Av falls within it. Asur mil saper ul chabes. You cannot, you're not allowed to cut the hair, okay? And you can't do laundry, you can't wash clothes. Uba chamishi mutarim ne kvod Shabbat. How about when uh, um, Tisha B'Av, if it falls on Friday, right? And uh, then your person's allowed to wash the clothing on uh, the Thursday before, because of Kavod Shabbat. Right? Erev Tisha B'Av, the evening before Tisha B'Av, Lo Yochal Adam Shne Tavshilin. So, we've discussed up until now, three weeks, then we've discussed the nine days, and then we've discussed Shavosh Chalbo. Now the, the, the Mishnah is going to talk about one stage of mourning, which goes even further. Erev Tisha B'Av, Erev Tisha B'Av, we're talking about, but this is specifically the night of. So not the morning before Shabbat. Morning before Shabbat, you have bagel, have whatever you want. But on the evening, so we're talking about right before you break the fast in the final seuda. Lo yochal adam shnei tavshilim. You're not allowed to have two different types of foods that are cooked. Lo yochal basar v'lo yishteyayim. You can't 
eat meat and you can't drink wine. Rabbi Shimon Gamliel Omer, Rabbi Shimon Gamliel says, Yishane. No, it's enough to just make do something a little bit differently to mark it by the difference that I'm noting that this is Erev Tshabav. Rabbi Yehuda Mechayev Bechviat Amita. Rabbi Yehuda would require what he held. You have to turn over the beds, and the Chachamim did not agree. Vilohodu Lo Chachamim, and the Chachamim did not agree with him on this. I just want to show you the the words of Rashi for a minute. Look at Rashi for one second. Rashi says, Shne Tavshilim. What does it mean? Two dishes. Basar Vedagim. Meat. And fish. O basar ubetzim. You see Rashi right over here? Yeah, mm-hmm. O basar ubetzim. Or meat and eggs. Shalav. O dag ubetza. Okay? Or fish and uh, an uh, egg. Shalav. Kida amar beperek arve psachim. So we're talking about two tafshili means two different types of something, not two of one thing. Two of one thing would be allowed in the concept of Shnei Tavshilim. The Gemara already is going to discuss, first of all, what does it mean, Yishane? What was Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel saying? Uh, it's enough to just uh, change things. And uh, and, Rash- and uh, Rabbi Yehuda, he held that you had to turn the mattress over uh, on, on its back. So what, what, what did that mean? It's really important. Today, you know, we turn the mattress over. What do you have on the other side? Mattress. Another mattress. What's the difference? In fact, they used to tell you that every six months you should flip your mattresses and turn them around so that you know you don't develop lumps in your mattress and you don't kind of have uh, what's it called screen burn, yani, you know, on, on your mattress. So they would have you flip it around, turn it this way, turn it over, turn it back. However, in those times, they only the top of the mattress was different than the bottom of the mattress, and the bottom of the mattress was much less comfortable, and therefore, in a sign of solidarity with the sar, with the pain of the shechinah. And the, and the morning of that day, Rabbi Yehuda held that you would have to turn over the mitah. And the Chachamim said, no, you know, I get that that's not comfortable, but, uh, you know, we never, uh, that's, that's creating a new level that we never had before that we have no proof for. Okay, let's continue and finish the Mishnah. And we'll end with the ending of the Mishnah. The Mishnah says, okay, <clears throat> There's two days in the calendar that are the two happiest days of the calendar year. What are those days? The 15th day of the month of Av and Yom Kippurim. Everyone's thinking, wow, this guy, that's his happiest day. Shema Yisrael, what was his life? Okay, and the answers we'll see in just a minute. Shebahen, what about, what happened on these days that made them so happy? On those days, Benot Yisrael, Yotzot, Beklei Lavan Sheulim, the daughters of Israel, the single girls would go out in linen or white, white linen clothes that were, they borrowed. Why did they borrow them? How come you had to borrow it? Shelo Levayeset, Misha'enlo. Everyone wore borrowed clothes so that no one would be different than anybody else. Because there would be people that didn't have. Everything that a person uh, would wear uh, for this day, they would require tevila. Okay, they would immerse it in a mikveh. Exactly what the reason is, uh, we'll again, we'll see in the Gemara. The Gemara is going to explain why, why that was necessary, but the sneak preview is, because you don't know if you're borrowing it, whose it is, and this was meant to be the, uh, an object of the highest level of tahara. And the daughters of Yerushalayim would go out and they would dance in the vineyards. And what would they say, these girls dancing in the vineyards? Bachur, young man, lift your eyes and see. See what you're choosing for yourself. Don't get distracted by beauty. Put your eyes on a good family. Uh, false is grace, the hevel, and nothingness is yofi is beauty. The woman who has fear of shamaim, that's something which is praiseworthy. It says, Give her from the fruits of her labors. Okay? And in the gates amongst the people, they will praise her deeds. What is he saying? In the end of the day, the second pasuk is saying, uh, first pasuk, it's obvious what the connection is. The first pasuk is, don't look at the beauty, literally. Second thing is, um, in the end of the day, every person is given, ish, <coughs> ish kefi ma'alalav, 
person is given in this world according to their deeds, right? You reap what you sow. If that's the case, we would tell the guy, you think you're going to have a wonderful marriage because this girl's so beautiful and you, she looks great now. But in the end of the day, what she's going to bring home, what she's going to earn, her life is going to be based on her actions. That's going to be the kids. That's going to be the house. That's going to be the marriage. So make sure you're choosing, make sure you're choosing based on the person's on the person's deeds. Now, I think that it's important to mention over here that the Mishnah is telling you that they would do, they would be tovel, they would uh, 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 immerse the clothing in the mikveh because a person looking at this with modern eyes is liable to imagine uh, a girl, a bunch of girls dancing in slow motion in the vineyards. You know, you imagine some sort of scene which is very evocative, which is very sensual. Yeah, they had the the single girls dance. You know. And the Mishnah is describing the exact opposite of that. It's so it's, this is not an orgy in the fields, okay? okay? This is a bunch of women who are telling you, don't look at beauty, look at ama'asim. This was a very holy thing. So therefore, in order to, be un- to understand it in its pure form, the Mishnah says they would borrow the clothing so no one was embarrassed. Look how pure that is. Between and they the were wealthy, making sure, sorry? Between the wealthy and the poor? Between the wealthy and the poor, Okay. And not only that, and everyone was making sure to immerse the clothing because maybe the other person who used to wear it, maybe they were impure. You see that we're looking very carefully at purity here. That's not, this is not something which is uh, untoward, okay? And so does it say, Go out and see the daughters of Tzion. Tzion is a euphemism for the Jewish people and the Jewish people's land. The Melech Shilomo and the King Shilomo by the crown that his mother had given him as a crown on the day, on the day of his hatuna. Uh, of his marriage, on the day of the happiness of his heart. Why? Because that pasuk, these pasukim, shira shirim, were written as a euphemism, as an allegory to Hashem of Israel. And what, what is the love story? HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we're running away with him. And the story is of the love story between us and the Torah. And through the Torah connecting with God. So when we take out the Torah, we read about it, like the way the girl would feel like when she saw her, her hatan, when she saw the king. Now we have an interesting thing. We say, in the right body, right? And we always have this idea that we're going to change it from Yaakov Ishtam to Jeffrey Ishtam, right? Because now, now Jeffrey is the is the Hatan. But it's interesting because uh, we have as well. We also have that we say um, Shilomo and right, and we change and people change as well the name of the of the Hatan and the name of the Kala. But you see over here that Shilomo is not the name necessarily of the person in the song. It represents the idea of Shilomo. So we're learning from this pasuk. What are we seeing? Uh, from this from this concept, Yom Hatunato. What does Yom Hatunato mean? The Matan Torah. That's the day of Matan Torah. Yom Simchat Libo on the day of his happiness, his happiest heart. The Binyan Beit Hamikdash. That's the day that they built the Beit Hamikdash. She Bane B'Mera V'Yaminu. That should be built Bezat Hashem very very quickly in in our days. So Rabbi Shimon Ben Gamliel is now giving us one more verse. If they're talking about the Avodah and the Beit Hamikdash and talking about how we move from sadness to happiness, he's also telling us that once again, those happy days are going to come back to roost for Am Yisrael. The day of Matan Torah will become, uh, uh, re, uh, you know, will become re-enthused with the Torah. And the day of the Beit HaMikdash will again uh, visit our days. What you may have noticed if you're an eagle-eyed reader is that Rabbi Shimon ben Shimon ben and the Gemara explained the happiness of the, of the first day. Not the second day. Right. Didn't tell us why right. the the two days, the happiest day, and Yom Kippurim, and then it goes on a whole long rant about Chamisha Asar Be'av, but it doesn't tell you anything about Yom Kippur. Why? The answer is to us. That's a question. But to the Mishnah, to the Gemara, like obviously, the day that you get your kapara, then all the more so. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. exactly. The day a person gets kapara, that's obvious. We don't need to tell you why that's the happiest day. It's obviously the happiest day. You know what? I, what always struck me though. What always struck me is that 
he talks about these two days as if they're the happiest days. What's missing? What about Purim? What about Simchat Torah? What about Shmini Atzeret? Where does he say that was the 15th of Av? What do you mean? He says there's no festive days as the 15th of Av in Yom Kippur. Right. When the maidens of Jerusalem will go out dressed in white garments. He didn't say on the 15th of Av. That's on the 15th of Av. But that's not what he said. What do you mean? That is, the, that is what happened on that day. But that's not what this says. What do you mean that's not what it says? It says there's no... There, he, he said Israel had no days as festive as the 15th of Av yeah. and Yom Kippur. Correct. Comma, when maidens of Jerusalem would go out dressed in white garments that were borrowed. That, yes. That that presupposes that they did it on both days. Well, did they do it on Yom Kippur? I don't think so. No. So that's what I'm saying. So he, he gives you a hanging modifier, which we've already had one in this Mishnah. I don't know if anyone noticed I it. I remember the word. I don't remember where. Hanging modifier, hanging modifier means when you have something in the Pasuk which could relate, like this, like Mars is pointing yeah. out. It just tells you 15th and Yom Kippur, and on that day, and it doesn't say which day. Okay? I wish I had recall, I could just tell you exactly where it was. So we had one just now in the Mishnah. The Mishnah said... Um, go back to the Mishnah. The Mishnah said, "Here we go." She went to get something from outside, Emma. Emma, did you say that, Dad? Parasha gedola korin ota b'shnayim ve'aktana b'yachid. The the longer parasha, you had two people get the aliyah, and the shorter one b'yachid had one. B'shacharit b'musaf. Ba Shacharit, Ba Musaf. So you're like, okay, so that happened in Shacharit and in Musaf. Ube Mincha Nichnasim the Korina Piyem. And in Mincha they would all read by heart. Who said? Maybe it's Ba Shacharit. Ba Musaf u Ba Mincha they would read it by heart. How do you know where Musaf goes? Right. That's a hanging modifier. It's hanging. You don't know if it's attached to before, if it's attached to after. Okay. In the Gemara, we're going to discuss, and then we'll come out with an outcome, and it's going to actually be the way that we read it in the Mishnah. But we have at least two in the Mishnah, and Morris correctly identified the second, but it's referring to Chamisha uh, Asar in the month of Av. How'd you pull that out of your hat? <laughs> what do you mean? The first one. How'd you remember that? <laughs> That's like amazing. I love you. <laughs>